Hello, this is Dave, KA6BFB. If you've looked at any of my other YouTube videos, you've probably noticed that I enjoy interfacing these older radios to Ham Radio Deluxe. My first uh, one was an FT736 from the 90s. My next rig was an ICOM 720A from the 80s. That would be 1980 specifically. And then this one right here is from the 70s. This was from 1976. It's an ICOM 211. From what I can read on the internet, it seems that this is the oldest ham radio available that uh, allowed a computer interface through the accessory jack. When I did the video for the ICOM 720, I had some folks ask me if uh, I could do other rigs. And uh, there was enough that I looked into it. And I did a little research, and it appears that from uh, this rig in 1976 up through the mid 80s the same 24 pin Molex connector was used for the accessory jack on all those radios. There were three main families if you want to call them of uh, interface techniques and what I've decided to do is modify my board that I've made for the 720 and try to make it so it'll work on all of these radios. So here's the list. This will be the uh, ICOM 720, which I already have and tested. The ICOM 251, the 255, the 260, the 451, the 551, the 560, the ICOM 701 HF rig, and that involved uh, adding an analog interface. And uh, the ICOM 211, which is right here, and the ICOM 245. The the fact that there's three main techniques used means that I'm going to have to rely on the ham radio community to help me in uh, providing radios so that I can confirm that these interfaces work. Uh, I'll talk about that in a minute. Before I do that, I'm going to show you that this one works. So I'm going to go up here and I'm going to change the frequency a little bit. And you can see it changing on the radio. And let's go down here and we'll bump the megahertz there you go so that's all working and then like uh, like I did on the 720 I provided a memory these old rigs didn't have a memory but I've made one if you use the memory write uh, function on ham radio deluxe what I do is I have programmed it so it'll take the current frequency and store it on the 720, it takes the current frequency and mode and stores it. So I'm going to hit that right now. And then I'll turn off the radio. And turn it back on. And it will go to that frequency. Now, just show you that it's really doing this. I'm going to move the radio to another frequency, then turn it off, and it'll come back on with that original frequency that I memorized. And it should do that right now. Okay, so I live in Santa Maria, California, and I don't want to take possession of radios. It's just too dangerous from what I've experienced in the past. Somebody will send me a radio and uh, they'll say it was working fine when they sent it and it doesn't work fine when it came here and I just don't want to deal with that again. So what I'd like to do, I'd like to make the following offer. If somebody has one of the radios on the list specifically uh, the 701, the 245, 251, 255, 260, 451, 551, 560. I would like to test my circuit on your radio and uh, maybe do a little programming while I'm testing it. In exchange for that, I would give you a finished programmed chip that you could build yourself if you wanted to make an interface. I'll be making the schematics and the circuit board uh, available on my website and the uh, programmed microcontroller will probably cost somewhere around 25 bucks. But if you're one of those people that lets me test it on your radio, you'll get it for free. Oh, speaking of the circuit board, by the way, um, here's the circuit board that I made for the 720. But I've had to modify that a little bit to work on these radios, so there will be a new circuit board coming out. It won't be the one that was uh, used on the 720. 
Anyway, thanks for watching, and if you're interested, just get a hold of me. I'm good on my QRZ site. Thanks for watching.